Hey everyone, quick disclaimer. I want to apologize that there may be instances here and there where the audio sounds a little distorted. We had one of the rainiest days in the lady day this interview was conducted. Nonetheless, it is very insightful and promises to inspire you. Let's listen. Having built a clothing label that stems from the need to produce great quality and timeless clothes, Colleen, founder of Sequin, joins us from her LA home and shares with us the journey and what it took to be where she is today. Hi! <laughs> How are you? How, how's everything going? Oh my gosh, it's going great. So well, tell, kind of tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and then we can, you know, jump right into the interview. My name's Colleen Quinn. I've been sewing and designing pretty much since I could hold a needle and thread. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I met Tulu. I met you at FITM um, yes. in 2015, I think. And um, yeah, I was getting my second degree in fashion design um, because fashion design world is kind of interesting where like even if you, you know, you know how to sew and you know how to design, you've been doing it forever and you have all this experience, you still kind of want a degree to back you up. Um, It it makes it a lot easier for you to get hired uh, if you have an actual fashion design degree. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Yeah, so I had a bachelor's in fashion merchandising and production from University of Georgia. And I got the professional designation degree in fashion design at FITM with you. Uh, Then after that, I worked for a few designers back in Atlanta. I was head of design production. I want to get into that a little bit more um, down the line. But um, I just wanted us to like, you know, get a feel for like who we're listening to this week, because um, this podcast is about like, you know, sharing knowledge and like information about what it means to actually own your own brand working in the fashion industry. So where do you think like the passion for being in this industry? Where do you think it started from? When did you realize that you wanted to pursue a degree in fashion or a career in fashion design? Oh my gosh. Um, I think the first time like I I really had a hunger for it and was like this, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen. I think I was about 15. I mean, this is a very silly story, but I I was watching Project Runway while watching it was literally had my mannequin and was draping and making my dresses for high school dances. And I was like, wow, man, if I could do this forever, I think I would be the happiest person in the world. And then I was like, okay, let's make this happen. How do we do this? And researching how, how designers, like where, what, where they start, how they get where they are, what kind of commitment they have to put in, like, just so mm-hmm. I like, I could prepare myself for, you right, know, like right. the sleepless nights and, you know, lots of hard work. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I, I started. That's that's actually amazing to start that young and to settle down in your mind that this is what you wanted to pursue. Because I find that a lot of people who end up in the fashion industry either started out of like nothing else to do and they didn't really want mm-hmm. like a nine to five that was like, you know, tasking or something that really demanded a lot of like brain work. But I'm like, you don't understand in the fashion industry, it's way more brain work. <laughs> Oh you my can gosh! Ever imagine. So, talk a little bit about that. So talk right. a little bit about the the challenges of what it means to actually, you know, be in this industry. Not even getting into like the most, you know, complex details because not everyone understands the fashion language. But talk about right. just the amount of like work it takes, like the ethics and you know discipline and principles you have to like have um, to be in this industry. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a lot of fashion designers have taken the same route I have, but, um, Mm -hmm. so I started doing like custom designing, um, Mm -hmm. for clients, mainly for like bridal evening wear, mother of the bride, wedding attendees, that kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. that came with like its own challenges that I, like, 
I basically am being people's therapist. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. He, when you're like, oh, I want to be a fashion designer because I like pretty clothes. And everybody always wants to do the, the evening dresses and bridal because it's, you know, so elegant, so luxurious, yeah. and so mm-hmm. beautiful. I, like, of course, I understand that. But nobody understands, like, it's correct the most stressful time during their lives. So they tend to need an outlet and it's like being someone's hairdresser, you know, I hear some of the craziest stories and then right. it's a lot of like, no, you look incredible. Like, like, yeah, don't, no, you don't have back fat, like that kind of a thing. Right. Right. Um, oh my God. Yes. And then a lot of times, like um, people would come to me and be like, Oh, my wedding is in three months. Can you make me a dress? I'm like, <laughs> Um, how do, okay. I always try to approach it from not like, no, I can't do it. But like, okay, how can we make this happen? Some, some of the complications and things that you never expect are like travel or, yeah. um, like you, you know, I only have t- 24 hours with this person, so I need to yeah. fit in two fittings. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I'm not going to be sleeping. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's that. And then also, like, if you're running your own business, you do have money for your own, like, accountants and social media managers and all that. That's great. Yeah, a lot of times you don't have money for that. Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, yeah. teaching myself accounting and how, how do I do taxes and um, do I need to get an LLC? And, you know, like, just business end of things that, like, you're not necessarily taught in school um, unless you go to business school. Um, Correct. Which I, w- I would recommend. I kind of yeah. also want to piggyback of something you said, um, which is uh-huh. it's different from what you learn in school. Because like like you said at the beginning, we met in college and when we went to FITM, uh, which is Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, we had our campus in Los Angeles. Uh, they also have a campus in San Diego, I believe. I think those are the only two yeah. campuses I'm aware about. I don't know if they have other places. Do you think they have other places, Colleen? Yeah, I think they... Oh, when we went, I knew they had one in um, Orange County, and gotcha. I th- and I think they had one in San Francisco, but that I don't know if that gotcha. one still okay. operating. Okay, well, we went to the one in LA, downtown LA, and yeah, mm-hmm. would, I feel like it's so real when you say the experiences in the industry are completely not the same as what we learned in class. I feel like class was so textbook based and teaching some techniques. Uh, We did the crash course, which was um, crashing like probably like four years of program into like what, two years and we were done or a year and a half and we were done. Um, In your case, what was that? In my case, I I was crazy and I did it in a year because I didn't want to pay rent for more than a year in LA. Right, right, right. That's true. I did it for a year and six months. Yeah. I (laughs) mean, you guys did it the smart, no, you guys did it the smart way. Like everybody else in my, in the program, I think it was like, what, 10 of us. And we all, we all became like really close and we're all older and, I don't want to be in school and, again. <laughs> I know, I know, but we got to do this. We got to get through. And we all were like, yeah, yeah we, were, we were like, yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, not being from LA, probably one of the dumbest decisions I ever did. I, I, I think it was actually, honestly, like, I still, I was kind of amazed as to how you were even able to like cope. Cause I even felt like in the year and a half that we crashed the, the classes, it was a lot. So I can't even imagine like how much less sleep you got than we got. And we were complaining the whole time. So I can't even imagine like if oh, you yeah. literally realistically got any sleep the entire um, year that you were in, in college. <laughs> I have to say that last quarter all together, 10 weeks straight, I actually had two hours of sleep a night for 10 weeks straight. And, oh my God. That is and, insane. <laughs> I mean, I pulled three all-nighters in a week. Yeah, yeah, I remember in class, uh, Miss Manukian, standing up and I was draping and literally falling asleep. And Stacy, mm-hmm. another yeah. amazing woman in our program, she like caught me. I feel like it, I feel like fitting kind of like gave me some of the best group of friends. Like we've remained friends literally since we met during orientation 
till today. Mm -hmm. Like we have our mm -hmm. group chat. We're all still talking. Uh, we have somebody who works in, you know, the bridal industry. We have somebody who designs for um, foreign brands, like helps them like, you know, work on their production here in from the U S and like sends them their sketches and stuff. We have you, you have your own brand. We have Stacy. She does jewelry. We're actually going to get Stacy um, on, on our podcast sometime soon when we can work out a schedule. And then we have Omar, he's into fittings. He's a stylist of the star. Um, and then mm -hmm. I also work in bridal. I do ready to wear, I work with photographers. So it's been like, it's, it's solidified our friendship because we all knew what we wanted out of life when we went to school. And we, I feel like we chose our group really pretty early. Like, I don't think we waste that time in becoming a clique. Yeah. Um, what would you say was your first job right out of uh, fit in? My first job, they were making a shirt, uh, like a compression mm -hmm. workout shirt, like kind of like Under Armour. And it had mm -hmm. sensors knitted into it that could like sense pulses and it would send that info through the sensors in the shirt to like a hub to an app on your phone so you could see like wow i'm going 80 percent on my biceps right now you know that kind of thing <laughs> that's amazing and really cool um idea and i yeah so i worked on i made all the sample um yeah i, I basically was their in-house sample pattern shirt putter together or guru or <laughs> shirt putter <laughs> yeah. shirt putter yeah. together I've never heard it yeah. it's a technical maker. industry <laughs> term <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah like I mean it was crazy because like it had literal wires in the shirt so I was using wow. like an ultrasonic welding machine like I had to teach myself how to use that and I, I was going to say, how it. did you know how to do that? Because we've never done that uh, in school. I don't remember us welding anything in class. <laughs> no. Just, you put the fabric in and it presses and you hear this like, and then you lift it up and like, the fabric has <laughs> mel melted together. But like, yeah. And then these are the things you can meddle with for it to like melt the fabric more or less essentially. Or yeah. I don't, so I kind of had to figure things wow. out. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was it was a learning experience, and uh, you know, it was my first big girl job with a salary, right? Health benefits. Right. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm living <laughs> large, and really, I was making like I was making like nothing, but yeah, hey, yeah. you know, it, that, that, yeah. that's all you need. That's literally as long as you can pay your bills, you're good. Like we weren't. I don't even think we were thinking about saving right out of college because mm -hmm. we were just either thinking about paying back student loan for those who you know had student loan or um just paying back whatever you borrowed from family and friends um everyone was just trying to like survive um and I think for me my first job right out of college was uh, in a bridal store actually no my first job was at this store in um on small Santa Monica in Beverly Hills um right behind Rodeo and it was this mm -hmm. small mom and pop store and my office was in the toilet. <laughs> Literally, she didn't have a space to give me a desk. So she just closed the toilet, made it non-functional and put a desk over the toilet for me so that I could have a place to no. work. And, yep, yep. And I, 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 <laughs> and I, uh, I feel like that was obviously a violation of like, you know, like you can't hire somebody if you don't have a healthy place for them to work. But, you know, I was so desperate to have a job. <laughs> and I still drive by there in Beverly Hills now. And I'm just like, I cringe. Like, why did I do this to myself for like six months of my life? I was literally oh working at this place. Um, but yeah, I was, I think it was one of those things where like, we were very desperate when we got out of college. Cause like, okay, now we have this fashion design, you know, degree and we have to get some kind of experience before we can either start off on our own or, um, you know, find people that we can collaborate with and probably start a brand. Um, were you thinking about starting a brand right out of college or you thought about, you know, let me work for a couple of years and while you were working, it kind of just naturally grew like, you know what, I think I want to start something on my own. I kind of wanted to start my own brand. I like to get all my research and as much as possible before I, I do something because, you know, I don't like surprises, but 
and you know that that's the way life works so I like to be as prepared Mm -hmm. as possible you know I'm gonna go to school I'm gonna get my degrees I'm gonna go and work for companies that are small startups so I can literally learn how the brand works how they do everything wearing many hats which correct I, I I don't mind doing um as long as you're uh you know paid uh for all those hats you wear i think why not how do you get stuff from overseas and and the plan was to move to la in 2020 march or april 1st 2020 and you know we all know what happened then so (laughs) correct yeah Um, covid there's no good time there's no good time let's be honest (laughs) yeah which we're going to get into because, yeah, your your career is very interesting. And, like, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on board. Um, just to, you know, encourage everyone out there who thinks um, this industry is so draining. Yes, it can be draining. But there is, you know, there's mm-hmm. good sides to every industry. Even engineers, they don't always make bank every sing- on every single project. But there's certain projects where you can actually make good, good and decent profit um, to kind of keep the engine running. Um, so where mm-hmm. were you able to um, get funding for you to be able to get your sewing machines, to get your supplies, your thread wall, um, fabric, toil, you know, drafting paper, scissors, needles, pins, yeah. threads, just <laughs> everything. How are you able to get funding um, to start your brand? Um, well, to be on the safe side, I like saved uh, as much as I could when I had a salaried job. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like okay worst scenario i'll probably be jobless for six months to a year so let's save enough money pay rent and eat and gas mm-hmm. in la right. for right. a year right when i was working my old job i i was like eating ramen every day and like so i made a plan and that's how i did it and yeah luckily um when we did get to la eventually um i just kind of hit the ground running and so yeah, yeah, I'd say that that's kind of how I pay for everything is just like these little, these projects, um, side projects that I do for other brands and designers where I, I do sample making, pattern making, um, small batch productions, and like tech yeah. packs, because I learned all that at Fitum, which, you know, yeah. it was great. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can literally do anything except probably selling. That's, that's one thing I'm not good at. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean you 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 touched on something important which is um you started small on one of mm-hmm. the previous i think it was part two of the of this podcast um of starting your own brand i said something there which was if you have a job don't quit it now and just to jump into this industry because it can be a money pit it can be draining financially so mm-hmm. you kind of want to save and slowly invest in your dreams but don't just like quit a job thinking because you have this cool ideas to make t-shirts all your friends are saying yes they're all gonna buy like a lot of your friends are gonna support but they probably won't be a customer when people were like oh, i had this ideas everybody was gassing me out saying yes go do it and then you have a thousand t-shirts and now you're gifting them for free because no one is actually buying it um mm-hmm. so starting small it's is one thing that yeah i also had to learn um that I didn't have to, you know, have a studio right away. I started sewing in my apartment because I was I couldn't afford to rent like a full on studio and still be paying rent and you know all the bills and stuff. So starting small is important. it's very important. But if you have like this beautiful, amazing studio and your staff, or even if you're the one making the clothes and your clothes, your your sewing skills are not good, your customers are going to be able to tell because they don't see where you're sewing it at. They just see where you send them. So, um, what would you say was the like one of the biggest fear you had when you started? I know, obviously, like being scared of the unknown. Like, I wasn't, I don't have a job for like, you know, I I probably won't have a job for the next six months to a year. That's one fear. Um, I'm also going to a state that's very expensive. That's another fear. Um, you know, like th- my family is not really next to me, so like security of like I can just move in with my parents is kind of out the window. Um, what would you say were one of the biggest fears that you faced when you started to be like, okay, I don't want to work a nine to five. My biggest fear 
I mean, obviously, like just just making rent because that that is probably my biggest cost in LA. I was reading about it in the news and like the fashion industry as of last year, 2022, was worth over 1.7 trillion dollars. So what? if we even have the same taste, <laughs> yes. So if we even have the same taste, there is absolutely no way that we're like hurting each other. Instead, we're helping each other to make something from 1.7 trillion dollars worth of, you know, just money floating around in the in the world. So yes. yeah, it's it's insane. It's insane. Okay. Um, when you started, did you find that you needed to get mentors? Because I've had people ask me questions. I have some um, current FITM students um, who would like reach out to me like, hey, I saw in your bio that you went to FITM. Um, you know, do you want to mentor me? Um, what, what do you think is the importance of having a mentor in the industry? And do you even think they're actually necessary? I think it's important to have other like business owners that you know and like work with, you're at that level. How did you do it? Like, that's really important. Um, One of my life coaches, um, Darius Daniels, he said, um, I'm just paraphrasing, but he said, um, don't look for a mentor who you just like is famous and everybody knows about this person. Like, (laughs) oh my God, you should mentor with that person. He said, no, look for someone who's current lifestyle you want to kind of adopt not necessarily like yeah. copy but you want to adopt certain things from their life that you think is really helpful like it could be their work ethic it could be how they manage the company it could be how they've been able to take fifty dollars to turn it into a fifty thousand dollars within a year small business or take a five thousand dollar and turn it into a five hundred thousand dollar business um so he he was kind of the one who shifted my mindset when it came to looking for a mentor Um, as opposed to looking for for someone who is famous who may not even really have your time because if they're famous chances are everybody wants them (laughs) but if you found somebody Mm -hmm. who was you know very humble they have their successful business in your city or even like you know globally um, and you have access to that person um, I think it's it's important to find people that you think what they're doing is very important not just necessarily the clout of how loud they are and they put in your resume like oh I interned with chanel like no i think it's it's very important if you intern at chanel hey i'm not knocking down your your hustle i'm just saying that um yeah. like <laughs> like like you said you may be bidding for 12 hours a day and that's like not necessarily <laughs> unless you want to just be a bid expert <laughs> that's not necessarily you learning a lot of things yeah but if you work with like a smaller business it's easier for you to see the ins and out like taking purchase orders you know fulfilling an order if you how do you handle returns how do you handle you know getting the tags the label the shipping bags you know just the entire process of what goes into owning your business it's easier to learn when you learn with someone who is a you know smaller skill um than a mega company yeah i I told you when i moved here to la i started doing a lot of work with designers kind of doing anything and everything added another um kind of wing to my brand so i started a uh women's business casual line started very small (laughs) and I just have five styles and three colorways for each style except for two Mm -hmm. of them and yeah that's what I'm doing now so how do you select fabrics do you buy dead stock do you um, custom make your own prints do you solids like how how does that work for you dead stock where do you go for inspiration uh, I used to dream, dream like, like literal runway shows of my collections. Like, wow, I would dream. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's really silly, but I think it was more like I had some ideas in my mind, and then you know, and inspiration coming to life <laughs> in my dream. What, what do you, What do you hope women feel when they're ready to put on a sequin design? What do you hope they like? How How do you hope it makes them feel? I, I just want to build women up. Uh, I really love that. I love that it's something that's driven more of um, internal feeling, not necessarily like, oh, I want to look cute. Because um, I know a lot of people buy things for aesthetic, but I like that your message is more of like from the inside. 
I have one more question for you, um, and this is my final question. So being honest, um, tell us about some designs and that you've put blood and sweat, you know, and tears into, and they just didn't sell. Customers didn't respond to it. Nobody purchased it. What, what did you do with them? I mean, I have had a couple, like, custom mother bride pieces I ended up not even wearing. Um yeah. Yes, who I, I worked on a dress with her and she's just like, you know what? I just I'm not feeling it. I don't like it. I, I feel terrible. We were in the second to last fitting and that's when she Yeah spoke up. But Right. So I mean it, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like just yeah. moving on. What can you do, really? At the end of the day, you can't right. force them. So yeah, I think that's probably the hardest part but yeah yeah I mean, luckily she was like look I, like i'm gonna pay you obviously the whole amount because we're here at the final day like of course i think it just goes to show how real this business can get because you can be so emotionally attached to certain designs and certain things and to you it's like this is the most incredible thing i've ever done and somebody's just like eh, meh. like i've had that happen to me so I, I really, I, I commend you for being honest and sharing that. Yeah, things like this do happen. And you just, you know what, like you said, repurpose the hurt and turn it into something positive. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you so mm-hmm. much, Colleen, for taking time yeah. out of your day. If you guys want to check out more of Colleen's designs, um, go on www.cqinn.com. D E S I G N S dot com. That's C Queen Designs dot com. And that's it from Colleen Queen, founder and CEO of C Queen Designs. I hope you've been able to learn a thing or two from this interview. Can't wait to see you next week.